Hello, my fabulous fashionistas. Welcome back to our channel. I'm so thrilled to be your guide today on this exciting sewing journey. Today, we're getting hands-on with the Harper Set sewing pattern. Now, if you've been looking for that perfect summer ensemble, this is it. The Harper Set is an absolute charmer, a laid-back two-piece set that's going to be your new best friend for those warm, sunny days. Whether you're a seasoned sewist or a beginner ready to take on a fun project, join me as we sew along and create this easy breezy Harper set together. Let's get started. Apply fusible interlining on the wrong side of the cuff, collar, and collar stand pieces. Read the specific instructions for your particular interlining. Each type has its quirks and may require a certain heat setting or perhaps a damp cloth. Now let's turn our attention to the left front shirt piece. Here's what you'll need to do. Apply a thin stripe of fusible interlining. This stripe should be about 3 centimeters wide, a perfect size to provide support without bulk. Place this stripe on the wrong side of the center front. Align it carefully with your iron, positioning it 1 centimeter away from the raw edge. It's all about precision and care here. Now, we're going to make the button stand, which is a crucial element of your shirt. So, take the left center front and turn it one centimeter to the wrong side and press with an iron. Next, Fold again 3 centimeters to the wrong side and press with the iron. Let's secure your neatly folded left button stand. You'll do this by sewing a top stitch, which not only holds things together, but adds a decorative touch as well. Position your top stitch 2.8 centimeters from the center front. As you sew, take extra care to catch the folded seam allowance inside. We're shifting our attention to the right front piece. Here's what we need to do. Apply a thin stripe of fusible interlining. This stripe should be about three centimeters wide. It's a perfect size to provide support without adding unnecessary bulk. Position this stripe on the wrong side of the center front. Using your reliable iron, carefully affix it to the fabric. Fold the right center front towards the wrong side, not once, but twice. Each fold should be three centimeters, making a neat six centimeters double fold. Next up, we're going to top stitch to secure everything nicely. Place your top stitch 2.8 centimeters from the center. As you sew, make sure to catch the folded seam allowance inside. Place the two yoke pieces on either side of the back shirt piece. Here's how you should arrange them. For the yoke piece that will be on the exterior side of the back piece, ensure you place the right sides together. For the yoke piece that will only be visible from the inside of the shirt, place the right side of the yoke piece against the wrong side of the back piece. Then, sew with a 1 centimeter seam allowance. 
press the seam open, and then from the right side of the shirt, press upwards towards the neck to ensure it lays flat. Now, let's add a lovely top stitch to the yoke seam. Think of this top stitch as a stylish detail that's not just beautiful, but practical too. You'll want to sew this top stitch from the right side, positioning it at 0.5 centimeters from the seam edge. While you're at it, make sure you catch the seam allowance as well. It's a bit like tucking in all the loose ends neatly inside. This ensures a neat finish that looks great and wears well. Now, we're going to attach the shirt pieces, which now includes the yoke, to the two front pieces of your shirt. And guess what? We're going to use the burrito method. Despite its tasty name, this method is all about achieving a tidy and professional finish on your shirt. It's like wrapping up all the top edges of the shirt neatly. First, link the bodice front pieces to the external yoke. Sew them together with their right sides facing each other at the shoulder seams. Use a 0.5 centimeters seam allowance for this task. But here's a key point to remember. Leave the internal yoke hanging free for now. Then, it's time to roll. Begin to roll the front and back bodice pieces together towards the shoulder seams in the same way you'd roll up a sleeping bag or a burrito. How tight you roll will depend on the thickness of your fabric. Bulkier fabric may require a tighter roll. As you roll, you'll reveal the internal yoke from underneath. Then, place the shoulders together and sew them at one centimeter with the shirt rolled inside. Here comes the truly magical part. Just like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat, you're going to pull the main bodice fabric through the neck hole. Continue pulling until the whole ensemble is turned the right way out. Isn't it amazing how everything fits together perfectly? Ready to tackle the sleeve vents? Let's dive in. To start, grab the sleeve vent piece and let's get marking. Use your chalk to trace the pattern lines on the fabric. Fold the sides and the top following the markings on the pattern. Position the right side of the placket to the wrong side of the sleeve. Align the middle mark of the placket with the vent mark on the sleeve. Pin in place. Now it's time to sew. Imagine you're creating a little rectangular box, joining the side tailor's tacks together. Make sure to keep your rows of stitches parallel. Take the scissors and carefully snip through the placket and sleeve, going straight down the center. Aim to cut between the rows of seams you just created. Next, navigate your scissors towards the corners of your rectangle. 
You're going to snip into these corners, but take care. You want to avoid cutting past the seam. Bring the placket to the right side of the sleeve and press the seams. Fold back the long edge of the shorter side of the placket. Place the folded edge on top of the sewn line and pin in place. Fold the other side of the placket across the shorter side. Press under the long edge. Fold back so that the pressed under edge is on the sewn line. Pin in place. Sew the small folded edge with a one millimeter seam allowance. Stop the sewing at the top. Sew the long folded edge in place. Make sure the underside of the placket is not caught by the stitches. Continue sewing around the top. Let's keep our focus on the sleeve. Align it with the armhole, ensuring that the right sides are facing each other. Keep an eye out for the notches on the sleeve and armhole. These need to match to ensure everything aligns perfectly. Once your sleeve and armhole are getting along, pin them together to make sure they stay in place. With everything aligned and secure, it's time to sew the sleeve and armhole together. Use a one centimeter seam allowance from the raw edge. After the sewing part, it's time to give your work a good press. Finally, overlock the seam to tidy up the edges and prevent fraying. Next, you'll want to bring the sides of the bodice together. Make sure the right sides are facing each other, like they're sharing a secret. Align the edges of the fabric perfectly and double check that the sleeve hems and the waistline are also aligned. Once everything's in position, pin the edges together. Now, it's time to sew. Run a neat line of stitches along the edges of the bodice, starting from the sleeve hem and continuing to the hem of the shirt using a one centimeter seam allowance. Press the seam open and overlock.
Grab two cuff pieces and let's put them to work. You're going to fold the top part of the cuffs inward. It's a small fold, just one centimeter. Make sure to fold towards the wrong side of the fabric. Next, you'll need to place the top and under cuffs together, right sides facing each other. Pin them along the edges and the bottom. Sew them along the edges and the bottom using a one centimeter seam allowance. After sewing, trim the corners at an angle. Once you've done that, it's time to flip the cuffs right side out and give them a good press. Next up, grab your outer cuff piece and place it on the bottom of the sleeve. They should be placed with their right sides facing each other. Once they're perfectly aligned, pin the two pieces together, making sure the edges are perfectly matched and the sleeve pleat is towards the side. Don't forget to make the pleat. Now, it's time to sew. Using your trusty sewing machine, join the bottom of the sleeve to the top of the outer cuff. Make sure to keep a one centimeter seam allowance. After sewing, treat your fabric to a well-deserved press. Press the seam allowance towards the outer cuff. Take the undercuff piece and turn under the seam allowance so it is hidden on the inside of the cuff. Pin the undercuff in place around the cuff edge, making sure the seam allowance is inserted inside the cuff and the two leading front edges are symmetrical. Use a flat top stitch to securely attach the undercuff to the cuff edge. Sew at a distance of 0.5 centimeters from the edge. Let's move our focus on the collar. We're going to unite the upper and under collar by sewing them together. Here's how. First, Align them with their right sides facing each other. They're about to become the best of friends. Then, using a one centimeter seam allowance, sew around the sides and the outside edge. Now, for a dash of precision. When you approach the corners, sew a sharp point by smoothly pivoting. Next, say goodbye to the surplus fabric at the corners. Once you've done that, turn the collar to the right side. Voila! And for that extra touch of perfection, press the collar gently.
Last but not least, it's time to top stitch the sides and outside edge. Here's a nifty trick. Use the edge of your machine foot as a guide. Grab one piece of your collar stand and fold the outer edge one centimeter inwards, bringing wrong side to wrong side and press with an iron. Next, gather the two parts of the collar stand. They are about to become inseparable friends, with the collar nestled snugly between them. To create this bond, place them right sides together and stitch along the front and top edge of the collar stand. Now, let's do some fine tuning. Trim the seam allowance narrowly. Turn the collar stand and smooth out any wrinkles or folds with your iron. Your collar is now ready to be attached. Let's bring together the outer collar stand and the neckline. Place them right sides together. Remember to match the notches and pin in place. Sew in place at one centimeter. Next, fold the lower edge of the under collar stand under. Pin it in place around the neck, making sure to tuck the seam allowance inside the collar stand.
finally, we'll secure everything with a top stitch. This is going to secure the under collar at the neck edge. Sew it 0.5 centimeters from the right side. Next up, let's hem the shirt. First, turn up the hem by 0.7 centimeters to the wrong side and top stitch at 0.5 centimeters. Then, grab your scissors and cut the excess fabric as close to the seam as you can. Next, fold the hem again, 0.7 centimeters to the wrong side, and sew a final top stitch at 0.5 centimeters. Now, it's button time. Firstly, let's create the buttonholes on the right button stand and the upper side of the cuff at the points indicated by the pattern markings. Sew the button on the left button stand and cuffs. Your shirt is now ready. Ready to sew the shorts? It's as simple as pie. First, Grab your fusible reinforcement tape. You're going to apply this to the front leg pocket opening, but on the wrong side of the fabric. Next, you'll want to apply fusible interlining precisely in the right fly area. Once your interlining and fusible interlining tape is in place, use a hot iron to fuse it to the fabric. Grab your pocket pieces. We're going to introduce them to each other, right sides together. Align them perfectly, matching the notches and pin along the curved line. Sew the small and big pocket pieces using a seam allowance of one centimeter. Once they're firmly attached, overlock the seam edge to finish it off. Last but not least, press the seam flat. Take your small pocket piece and front leg piece and place them right sides together. Align them perfectly and sew along the pocket opening.
Snip the fabric where the seam ends, taking care not to cut into the seam. Now, to add that professional touch, sew a flat stitch along the seam, on the pocket piece. This should be a tiny 0.5 centimeters from the edge of the pocket opening. Ensure that you're catching the seam allowance as well. Gently fold the pocket into its natural position. Take a moment to ensure it's perfectly aligned with the front of the pants and press using a hot iron. Once your pocket is comfortably in position, it's time to secure it. Pin it in place on the top of the pants and along the side seam. Sew a top stitch at 0.5 centimeters. Your pocket is now ready. Grab both front leg pieces and place them together, right sides facing each other. Align them beautifully on the center front line and pin in place. Sew in place using a 1 cm seam allowance. Overlock the seam and press with an iron when you are finished. Let's fold the right fly over the left fly in a way that the fusible interlining is playing hide-and-seek, completely concealed. Pin it in place and press with your iron, making sure it's as flat as a pancake. Now, it's time for some top stitching around the fly edge on the right side of the fabric. Using the pattern, copy the fly line onto the fabric for guidance. Start your sewing journey at the waistline of the pants, using a medium length stitch. Sew straight down the crotch, making sure your seam is as smooth and straight as a river. Make sure you are catching the underfly in the seam also. As you reach the end of the seam, it's time to follow the gentle curve of the fly. Maintain a smooth curve with your stitches. Remember to keep the fabric taut as you sew to prevent any puckering or gathering. Sew the center back seam of the back leg pieces. Place the right sides of the fabric together and sew along the seam line using a 1 cm seam allowance. Overlock the seam edge to finish it and press it flat to set the seam.
overlock the sides of all the pant pieces separately from the waist until the second notch. Let's place your front and back pieces together, right sides facing each other. Make sure to match the notches on each piece and use pins to secure your fabric in place. Your sewing adventure starts at the waist and continues until you reach the second notch. Once your seam is sewn, it's time to press it flat, just as you've sewn it, and then open. Let's line up the inner edges of your pant. Make sure to align the bottom of the crotch seam and the hem notches perfectly. Sew the inner leg seam using a 1 cm seam allowance. Then, treat your seams to a hot iron press. To finish off, overlock your seams. Snip into the second notch until the seam, taking care not to pass it. Let's move on to the next stage of your project, applying fusible interlining to your pant facing pieces. Press the fusible interlining on the wrong side of the facing pieces. Lay out your back facing piece and then position your front facing piece on top of it, right sides together. Next, pin along the inner edge from top to bottom. Now, let's not forget about the outer side. Pin from the top and continue down to the first notch. Sew in place using a one centimeter seam allowance. Snip the seam allowance on the outer edge and the press the seam open on both sides. Overlock the top edge of the facings all around. Position the facings and the pants in such a way that their right sides are facing each other. Ensure the hem of the pants aligns perfectly with the hem of the facings. Spot the notches and seams. Perfect. Align them together. Finally, it's time to let your sewing machine do their magic. 
Sew the facing to the hem using a one centimeter seam allowance. Start on the outer edge from the side seam. Trim the seam allowance narrow on the curved areas. Turn the facings over to the wrong side of the pants. This maneuver should expose the beautiful hem that you've painstakingly created. Pin in place and press using the iron. Carefully press along the hem, making it as crisp as you can. This will form the final hem of your pants. Sew a top stitch along the overlocked edge of the facing, attaching the top of the facing to the pants.
It's time to bring out your waistband piece and show it some love. Firstly, we're going to fold that waistband. Fold it in such a way that the right sides are together, with the short edges perfectly aligned. Next, it's time for a little sewing. We're going to sew the sides together. You're going to leave a 2.5 centimeters gap, a little doorway if you will, for the elastics to be inserted later. Press the seam open. Align the two long edges of the waistband wrong sides together and pin them in place. Sew the long edges of the waistband using a straight stitch, sewing at a distance of 0.5 centimeters from the raw edge. It's time to trace the elastic channel markings onto the waistband piece following the pattern. Trace a line at 5 cm from the bottom of the waistband. Once the line is traced, get ready for some top stitching action. Top stitch the waistband at 5 cm from the bottom, all around. Lay the waistband and pants flat with the right sides facing each other. Align the waistband with the waist of the pants, matching the waistband seam with the center back of the pants. Pin the waistband in place. Sew the waistband to the waist of the pants using a straight stitch, sewing at a distance of one centimeter from the raw edge. Overlock the seam and press. Cut a piece of non-roll elastic the length required to go around the waist comfortably. 
Pin a safety pin to one end and thread through the casing. Pull the two ends of the elastic together two centimeters overlapped and sew to join them. Push the elastic into the casing and sew across the gap. Now you're going to divide your waistband into eight equal parts. Think of it as if you're slicing a beautiful pie. This will help us ensure that everything is distributed evenly and holding your elastic right where it needs to be. Now here's the fun part. Time to start top stitching. Find that line on your pattern that's waiting for your attention. Sew a top stitch right over it and let's make sure that elastic doesn't go wandering off. Your beautiful set is now ready. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to stay updated on all our Sew Along adventures.